Welcome back. In this video, we're going to cover the law of sines, kind of a continuation of what we've done in previous videos. We did cover the law of sines in those as well, but now we're going to look at a new situation called the ambiguous case. We used the law of sines to solve triangles that had maybe two angles and an included side, or two angles and a non-included side, um, because they were made that connection to geometry with angle, angle, side, and angle, side, angle. But you may also recall from geometry that there was no side, side, angle congruence. And that was because side, side, angle gave us two possible different triangles. As you can see here, I have two triangles, A, B, C, and A prime, B prime, C prime. And A, B, and A prime, B prime are congruent, and B, C, and B prime, C prime are congruent, and angle C and angle C prime are also congruent. So we have side, side, angle. However, those two triangles, while they have these three things that are corresponding parts are congruent, the triangles clearly are not congruent. We've got an obtuse triangle here and a, an acute triangle um, on the right. As you can see, this angle B and angle B prime, that particular angle acts as a hinge. So as that hinge can be wide open on the obtuse side here on the left, or that hinge can close giving us a totally different triangle, but still having the same corresponding lengths. So that leads us to the ambiguous case. So if we have side side angle, we could have something that looks like the triangle on the left or one that looks like this triangle on the right, clearly not congruent. So we call this ambiguous because we're not clear of the outcome. We're not sure what we have, okay? Hopefully, for none of you, your teacher will never write a college recommendation that says something to the effect of, waste no time in admitting this student to your school. Well, do they mean to admit you immediately? Do it right away, don't waste any time. Or do they mean, hey, Admitting this student might be a waste of your time, so and don't waste it. So thus we have ambiguous. You're not really sure what you have. If we have side side angle, two sides and a non-included angle, we have to consider the ambiguous case. So recall the law of sines. The law of sines, we've got our proportion A over the sine of A equals B over sine of B equals C over sine of C in which we'd have three of any of the four, and then we would set up our proportion. And we always want to solve for something that's in the numerator. So if we have two sides and an angle, we will set it up with the sine A, B, or C on the, in the numerator. Whereas if we have two of the angles and we need one of the sides, we would so solve for the sides in the numerator. So let's take a look at a a sample problem here. So we want to solve triangle ABC if A is 61.4, side A is 35.5, and side B is 39.2. So we'll use the law of sines to get us started here. Um, we want to solve, let's go ahead and solve for angle B. So I'm going to say that the sine of angle B over side B equals the sine of angle A over side A. Uh, I'm going to multiply both sides by 39.2 and get that out of the denominator. So now I have the sine of angle B The sine of B equals 39.2 sine 61.4 all over 
35.5. It's kind of a crazy looking ratio, but that's my ratio. Okay, so we will input this into our calculator. So we'll put sine negative 1 of that entire quantity. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Pull up our calculator. And make sure you're in degree mode. So my mode is in degree mode, so I'm good. So I will do sine, second sine, 39.2, sine 61.4, and I got closed parentheses, all divided by 35.5. And then I have to close the parentheses again. I have to close that first parenthesis there. And enter. And I get an answer of 75.8. So angle B equals 75.8. So I'm going to put that up there by angle B. Now. This is where the ambiguity comes in. Since supplementary angles, supplements, I'm going to note this, have the same sign, value, then we need to check to see if that is going to, if the supplement works. So what we need to do is we need to take 180 minus 75.8, and I get 104.2. So our question is, could our other could angle B be 104.2? Well, let's see. We know we have 61.4. So if we take 180. We subtract our 61.4. Our possible angle is 104.2, and that would leave us with 14.4 degrees, if my arithmetic is correct, which means that 104.2 is a possible angle. Okay, so this is possible. And it's possible because the 104.2 plus the 61.4 is less than 180 degrees. So the, the angle I knew plus the other angle it could be is less than 180. So 61.4 plus 104.2, that those two together is less than or equal to 180 degrees. Thus, we have another possibility for our triangle. This angle could be 104.2, and angle C could be 14.4. So this particular problem is two different triangles. Doing a little arithmetic here, I know the sum of the interior angles must be 180, which means angle C has to be 42.8. So now that we've found the three angles in both of our different triangles, we need to solve for the remaining side to finish solving the triangles. So we'll have to repeat the process once for the top triangle and then once for the bottom triangle. So let's go ahead and solve for C in our top triangle. And again, we will have to use the law of sines in order to make that happen. So we want to find C. So we know that on our top triangle here, we've got C over the sine of 42.8 equals A. 35.5 all over 
the sine of 61.4. I want to isolate C, so I have to multiply both sides by the sine of 42.8. And I will get C equals 35.5 times the sine of 42.8 all over the sine of 61.4. I'm going to go ahead and put that into my calculator. So 35.5 sine 42.8, close parentheses, all divided by the sine of 61.4. And we get our answer of 27.5. So then we know C is equal to 27.5 on the top. And we have solved that triangle. Now we have to take care of that same situation on the bottom. And we're just going to repeat our process. It's actually going to be exactly the same, but now instead of using the sine of 42.8, we're going to use the sine of 14.4. So on the bottom, we have C equals 35.5 sine of 14.4 all over sine of 61.4. And we can go to our calculator, and I can even do a little shortcut here. I can do second entry, and I will just go ahead and change my angle. I'm going to change it to 14.4. So I've just edited my entry to reflect my new angle, and I hit enter, and I get 10.1. So then this side would be 10.1, and sure enough, all of our answers make sense. Let's go on to another sample problem. Solve triangle ABC. We've got this particular triangle with our angles and sides already labeled. So let's go ahead and solve right away for one of the angles. Our only choice is to solve for angle a. So we know that the sine of a is e over side a equals the sine of b of c 75.5 all over 13.2. And we want to isolate this, so we got to get the sine of A all by itself, so seven, multiply both sides by 17.9. And we get the sine of A equals 17.9 sine of 75.5 all over 13.2. Well, let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at this fraction and see what it is. Point up my calculator. Let's take a look at 17.9 sine of 75.5, close parentheses, all divided by 13.2. Because that's our ratio. And we get this ratio of 1.31. So that's our, that's our fraction, or that's our decimal from the table of values. So we would do sine negative 1 on our calculator and see what we get. So we'll do the arc sine. 
1.31, and we get this error. Hmm. Well, the reason we get the error is because this ratio is greater than 1. And sine, the largest possible sign, is 1. Sine must be, the value of sine must be less than or equal to 1. Okay? And since this is greater than 1, can't happen. So this triangle does not exist. Now let's draw triangle ABC. We've got an angle and two non-included sides. So we're going to use our law of sines. We have to look out for the ambiguous case here. So uh, sine of, we'll solve for angle. We have to solve for angle A. That's got to be the first one we look for. So the sine of A over 19.6 equals the sine of 68.7 all over 25.4. Let's go ahead and multiply both sides by 19.6. And we get that the sine of A equals 19.6 sine of 68.7 all over 25.4. So we're looking for an angle. We've got sine. So this fraction better be less than or equal to 1. Okay, we want that to be less than or equal to 1. Let's check that out. We'll go to our calculator. 19.6 sine 68.7 close parentheses, all divided by 25.4. And we get 0.7189, so that's good. So we can do the arc sine of our ratio. We've got the ratio, 0.7189, so we're going to put that into our calculator. And we get 46. That's going to round to 46. So angle A equals 46. But there's another possibility for angle A. Okay. Couldn't angle A also equal 180? minus 46. Okay, could it be that? Well, let's take a look and see. 180 minus 46 is 134 degrees. Well, could angle A be 134? Well, since angle B is 68.7, 134 plus angle B 68.7, that is like 200 and some odd degrees. That is over, yeah, it's like 202 degrees. So 134 points, 134 degrees is too big. So we don't have another option for a triangle here. You can't have, angle A cannot be 134. So our only option is 46. So now we can go ahead and solve the rest of the triangle. Angle C turns out to be 65.3. And then you will again use the law of sines to solve for side C. And I'll expect you to bring that to class. So now let's finish up the last sample problem. Without using the law of sines, determine if triangle ABC is a valid triangle and justify your answer. So we draw our triangle, we see angle B is 93 degrees, and side B is 42, and side C is 48. Well, hmm, angle C has, must be greater than angle B, because side C 
is greater than side B. Well, this is impossible. It's impossible for angle C to be greater than angle B. Angle B is already 93 degrees. We can't have another angle in a triangle that would give us in excess of 180. And that would have to be the case. So it's impossible for angle C to be greater than 87 degrees. So this triangle does not exist. And that wraps up our sample problems for the ambiguous case, and we will see you in class.